Okay, so Ghostbusters 2016. I'm making this video kind of as an apology. I had to have a live stream with Michael and Tim yesterday, and I don't think I actually carried myself all that well there. Sorry, Mike and Tim, but I think I left your opinions influence my own a little bit too much. I've talked to some friends who actually like the film. I still don't, but I kind of understand what they're seeing now, so I wanted to get my own thoughts out there independent of anything else. This is that video. First off, I want to talk about what I didn't like about the film. It's kind of a weird way to start it, but I got to get the stuff I didn't like out of my system before I can get to the stuff I actually thought kind of worked. Chris Hemsworth. I get that he's beefcake. I don't mind that. You look at the original two movies. You get the blowjob scene. Sure, there's no, you know, skin showing and it's ghost and stream scene, whatever. It's still a sexual pleasure kind of thing. And then you look at the second one with Sigourney Weaver. Why does she take off her top in that bathtub scene? I have never understood that. It makes no sense in the context of the rest of the film. She just, oh, look, I'm going to take off my top too. So this baby is more comfortable? No, she's taking it off because it's going to appeal to the men in the audience. That's it. It does not fit with the film. It's one of the things about the second Ghostbusters I don't like, and I'm actually one of the ones who's more favorable in opinion on that film. Back to Hemsworth. I get his beefcake. Why does he have to be so fucking dumb? This is the same reason I don't like Zoolander. He's so dumb he doesn't realize that that's a model of the building. I don't find dumb in and of itself funny. I'm not even all that big a fan of Dumb and Dumber. Okay, yeah, they're dumb. I get it. It's not funny to me. Move on. Oh, oh, we, we told him to not listen and he's covering his eyes. Oh, we told him not to look and he's covering his ears. Like, who thinks like that? Y y you make your character too dumb. You have to make them still a real person. So why are you making this sock puppet? The villain. He's not scary. I expect a Ghostbusters villain to at least have some kind of fear in them, but this is just some guy. Now, I've heard the reason, like, oh, he's just there to give them someone to fight, but for all the damage he's causing, all the stuff he's doing, he seems to be like he's framed as a huge threat. I don't really understand what his motivation is. Okay, he was bullied, so he wants to take it out in the world. I didn't find him interesting. He was just this weird guy. And again, I don't find that either scary nor funny. They spend a lot of time explaining the technology and why do we need to know how this works? You've got a gun, the gun catches the ghost, you've got a trap that pulls the ghost in. That, that's it. They didn't explain this stuff in the original movie and I was perfectly fine with that. The closest thing we got to somebody explaining something in the original movie was when Ray was explaining to Winston how to put a trap in. And he was going through all this technical jargon and Winston's going, like, I don't care. You put the trap in, you push the buttons, the trap is empty. That's all I need to know. And that's what kind of made that funny. But here they're trying to exp Oh, I, I can boost the feed of all this and the, the, like that gizmo that sucked the ghost in and turned it into. How are you killing something that's already dead? That doesn't make sense to me. Oh, but they're extra dimensional beings that. They're, they're not really extra dimensional beings because two of them, at the very least, are clearly ghosts of people who were alive at some point. Do you die, go to this dimension, and then you can be killed again? You might think I'm overthinking this, but this is a sci-fi element, and you do need to kind of make sense within your own universe. Let's just assume that, yeah, okay, you do. You can actually destroy them like they do in that last scene, which was just a bit of a clusterfuck. Why then, in the end credit scene, is she building a containment unit? You can destroy them. Why are you trying to contain them? Uh, to, so you can figure out how to send them back to where they came from? But they're here, they're causing problems, and you just... See what I mean? This doesn't make sense. Speaking of the action scenes, I didn't find the action scenes all that compelling. Especially that last one, because again, they had established Proton Beam captures the ghost, holds it in place until the trap pole sucks it in. And yet here, they're going around destroying the ghost, kill it, killing the ghost. I've got a lot of the same complaints about the Transformers movie, in that it's all fairly quick cuts, and you can't really follow the action all that well. And Oh, here, here's one thing that actually came up in the discussion last night that I actually agree with. She pops that Stay Puff Marshmallow Man ghost with a knife. How does that kill a goat? Oh, oh, it was a possessed balloon, but how does that, how is that getting rid of the ghost? That seemed to be what was implied. But the, why did the ghost need physical objects in order to hold the people down that... Yeah. This, is, this is the stuff that bothered me about the film. Uh, a lot of the jokes just kind of felt flat. Like, 
Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It is kind of funny that oh, now they're right above the restaurant and it's taking, still taking them an hour to get the soup despite being you know right over the restaurant. But they that they played that out too often. It's like I get it. You don't need to. You don't need to go back to this one joke. It, it's kind of getting old very quickly. When they first go to that the house from the opening scene, in order to meet uh, Ed. I'm sorry, I can't remember his last name. I'm gonna call him Ed So and So. So they're they're there to meet Mr. So and So, and then the, the tour guide says, "Oh, Mr. So and So died 15 years ago." And then the girls get all excited, and the, the, then Mr. So and So walks up and like. Wait, wait, but who's that? Oh, oh, that's Ed Jr. I don't get why it's funny that that the guy, the tour guide would think that these women were thinking about Ed Sr. Why would they be referring to Ed Sr.? That I don't understand why that's funny. Because to me, that's just stupidity. And again, I don't find stupidity in and of itself funny. The cameos. Okay, yeah, nice little touch to Egon Spengler, but wait, so Egon actually was in this universe already, but does that mean everybody in New York forgot about it, or is this an entirely new universe, or doesn't really make sense? This is another thing, why, so, why is this a reboot? It almost would have made more sense for it to be set in the same universe, and then you could have the characters cameoing as these people. It actually would have made a lot more sense, because freaking Bill Murray's cameo. Holy shit. What a th fucking waste. His entire bit just irritated the hell out of me. Ooh, I wanted to punch something whenever he was on screen. Honestly, it would have made more sense for someone like Walter Peck to be in that role. Uh, or heck, you want to flip the script? You want to flip the script a little bit? Make that Dan Aykroyd. I think that actually would have been funny, because anybody who knows Dan Aykroyd knows that he actually thinks a lot of this ghost stuff is real. So you make him the skeptic, and then that becomes an in-joke to the crowd. I think that would have been a lot better. But yeah, Bill Murray, it almost felt, and I said this in the show, that they had recorded all most of that dialogue with somebody else, and then they found out, oh, we can get Bill Murray, let's re-record that and have him be it. And it just felt completely disrespectful to the original, as opposed to being an homage to it. Dan Aykroyd's cameo. I think it actually would have been funnier if the girls had actually gotten in the cab and they had this conversation while they were driving to the ghost. As it was, it kind of just took me out of the film and reminded me that, oh wait, that's Dan Aykroyd. He was from the first one. So that one didn't work so much. The post credit scene. It was built up incorrectly. I kind of agree with Tim there. Like, you could have done that much better. It could have been all the other girls going around doing their thing, and Patty's listening to this thing, and like, hey, everyone, come, come here, come here, Girl, girls, listen to this. Building music, and everyone gathers around, and she presses play. Zool. Tut. Would have been much more effective, in my opinion. Uh, okay. I do want to talk to you about, about a few of the things I did like, just so I can, you know, end on a more positive note. I actually quite liked the opening scene. I thought it was fairly witty. Last night the joke came up about, oh, the, this is where P.T. Barnum d decided to enslave elephants. So, that goes along with what he's been saying throughout this entire tour. He's obviously being tongue-in-cheek, and there it's actually kind of funny that the uh, that the tour people seem to be taking him seriously about this, because he's obviously joking. He even ended with a pretty good scare with him running down to that basement and saying, oh, shoot, why did I come down here? And then the and then the build-up, and, uh, okay, this is where things started to go wrong. I kind of thought that the title actually came up the wrong thing, but that kind of indicative of, hey, the, just the timing of all the jokes seems a little off. Anyway, but, yeah, opening scene, quite good. Uh, the entirety of the rock and roll concert. I actually really liked that entire scene. Wasn't a fan of Ozzy in it. One thing that came up yesterday was that, why is that a demon? But, you know, I can accept that, okay, ghosts die, they go to this alternate dimension, and okay, maybe there are, there are these other beings there that are also ghosts who don't look human. I can kind of accept that. That didn't bother me all that much at all, and I <laughs> I said this about the trailer. This is one of the 
few parts of the trailer that actually worked. When the demon ghost is on Patty's shoulder and the teenagers take the selfie stick, I can actually see somebody doing that. That's the kind of humor that worked. I liked that scene. So, yeah, kudos for that one. I still maintain Annie Potts' cameo worked. Yes, she was playing the same character, but there it worked because anyone who didn't know that that was Annie Potts would have been like, oh, sarcastic little secretary. Yeah, I've seen those before. But here, to me, it's funny because, yeah. <laughs> and that's Annie Potts who did the same thing in the first one. Ernie Hudson right at the end. That's one was like, yeah, okay, you got me. I should have seen Patty's Black. I should have seen that, yeah, of course Ernie Hudson's going to be her uncle, who, who she's talked about for a while. That, sh I should have gotten that. That was a good one. That was a good one. More positive stuff. I thought the actresses were mostly fine. Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig. They were fine. I, I couldn't see the distinction between the two. Okay, sure. One of them went back to study actual science, whereas one continued with the paranormal stuff, but once Kristen Wiig's character actually goes back to being the paranormal stuff, they're essentially the same. I wanted more distinction between the two. Kate McKinnon. Yeah, she's having it up, but she's clearly having fun. I like that. Leslie Jones. Uh, a lot of the times I found her kind of bland, but she had her moments. As I said, the entirety of the rock and roll scene. Loved it. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Probably a lot, because I kind of remember a lot of this film, I was... Okay, go to the next scene. Wow, the, the pacing of the film just was kind of slapdash. For something that's an action comedy or comedy action film, for me, you need better pacing. There's so much time when nothing's actually happening, or they're just explaining what's going on in their equipment, or the ley lines thing, which really came out of nowhere. I was actually kind of with Chris Hemsworth. This was one of the few times I actually was like, yeah, I agree with the dumb guy. She draws some X's on this map and then draws two intersecting lines. It's like, okay, so you've just triangulated something. This doesn't look like ley lines. This is, this is noticing that patterns form an X. That tells you nothing. Oh, look, they happen to have this book about ley lines lying around. That is, that, that's clumsy exposition and it comes just in that one scene, just plop right there. You need to establish this stuff more in advance. That, okay, ley lines are a thing, and or at least they think they're a thing. But no, it's all there in that one like, three-minute scene. And it's, it's kind of lazy writing. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, I, I think that's it. So, yeah. Mostly I was watching this and I was just kind of bored. It has its moments, but if I'm sitting there, we're just waiting, like, okay, get to the next scene, please. I get it. Please move on. That That's not the kind of movie that appeals to me. I don't think it's a complete disaster. I, I just think they needed to spend a little bit more time tightening everything up. There's a glimmer of an idea here that just needed more polishing. Anyway, I, I hope that clarifies things. I don't want to give it a 3 out of 10, because, seriously, the stuff I've seen that's worse than this, just, that's the stuff that kind of riles on my phones. But I gave a 4 to both Batman v Superman and X-Men Apocalypse. And I don't consider this film as good as those, but it's not as bad as something that's like, say, Mother's Day, which was just a train wreck. So I've, I've got to settle on about 3.5 out of 10. The frustrating thing about this one is that I could see, I could see what they were what they were going for, and some stuff that could have made this a much better film, but for some reason they just didn't do it. Now I know I've talked to some of my friends who actually really like this film, and I can kind of see why they think it would be good or fun, but I don't. It didn't work for me. It just didn't. I'm sorry. All right. I'll talk to you folks later.